Welcome everybody, this is Phil Beckwith, your professional painter and decorator. YouTube influencer, oh, I'd like to think so, I don't know what I'm influencing, but um, today's video, let's just revert back to what the thumbnail was. I'd got the Benjamin Moore scuff effects in one hand and I'd got the John O's Johnson's Aqua Guard in the other. Both very nice paints, some people prefer one over another, I do like that that comes at a cost. If your job can warrant that and you can price in for it, brilliant stuff. If not, you'd probably be using that or you pick up a penguin. You'd probably be using that one because you prefer one, how it applies, how it covers, all the usual and the price because that's 108 quid for that, just under four litres and you can get five litre can of that for about 60-ish quid. Right. Today's video, we've got Dave the Door. Now, how I do these videos, I'm in the studio and I do videos, come back to the door for a future video. So a number of videos back, Dave the Door was painted with Everall Aqua 40 in nice green colour, squalid green. Lovely finish, do like that, nice paint. Not tried it, give it a go. Everall Aqua 40 interior, exterior paint. Really nice, ideal for spraying kitchens. Um, but today's video, I want to actually see what the AquaGuard covers like, i.e. opacity, and what the Benjamin Moore covers like, stroke opacity, on a coloured door. Now, I'm under no illusions that's not gonna cover for one. I'm under no illusions that's not gonna cover for two. Probably three, but I want to give two coats to these sides of the doors. One with the Jonos, one with the Benjamin Moore. And let's just see, like for like, these two paints that are pitching against each other, both water-based paints, very nice water-based paints. And let's just see what they are like to cover, stroke the opacity over a bit of an extreme color change. Now, normally, your extreme colour change might be you're going over some magnolia yellowed off woodwork, oil-based um, woodwork, but we are giving it a proper colour to go over. So let's just see how the so let's just see how the perform. I don't want to say perform because it's not a performance video. It's more of a case of I want to see what they go like for the coverage, and I'll use the word coverage as in opacity. I want to see what the opacity is like. Does it grin through? Does it look like it wants another coat after two? If it doesn't, brilliant. If it needs a third, I'll possibly give it a third just to get that. Oh. Crossing the T's and dotting the I's, if that makes sense. Right, um, to keep it fair, I'm gonna use the same brush for both paints. I might have to stop the video and then come back um, after I've washed the brush out. I'm gonna go with, let's just try it, because I did do it on a previous few videos. It's the Canna Aqua. Um, see which one it is can you see premier 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 brush um and it's the superior paint loading release and coverage tapered filler um filaments for the fine smooth finish that's why i want to use the same brush for both um specially designed filaments for long life and no shape loss that's good and it's fsc wooden handle fsc Forestish Service Commission, I don't know, Fire I don't know, not sure. But it's it's a nice brush and we'll see what it's like on both. So um, let me just go and get my um, stuff ready and let's crack on. I don't want anybody laughing at me today and slating me, but for the purposes of this video, I am going to work out the tin because I'm only doing part of a door and also I don't want to get confused which paint I've used where. Now, we're going to go with the Aqua, um, Aqua Guard first and we use it on the right hand side. Now I've only taped it down to the, the middle rail, you can see just down to there. We've got a, a moulding and a panel, part of the mulling rails and style, well you've still got the styles but we've got part of, we've got a quarter of a door. Right, I'm going to work from the back of the can, just load my brush up, wipe it down. Just 
it's not a bad paint. My only criticism is with this, and it's probably just a slight criticism. Um, this is one of the paints that, if you're still getting into brushwork, you might find it creep slightly. So just be mindful of that. Don't overload your paintbrush that you're going to get it running. But on the whole, it's not a bad paint to apply. Um, if you've watched the previous video, look in the top corner, previous videos, it is advised you should be really using the correct undercoat. That would help with your opacity of your top coats. We've got a cooler day in the UK at the moment, if you're outside of the UK. Um, paint feels a little bit thicker to apply, but the paint's all been in the same environment. I'm just loading my brush up, getting enough on. I think I'll be able to work this all right, putting enough on and then laying it off. So let's get enough on, let's crow's nest it. Crow's nesting's every which way you can. Just wipe your brush down. With those nice filament tips, just lay it off horizontally. Spread that paint out and then just go back and lay off literally the tips of the bristles. And I'm going to talk to you while I'm doing these because as I'm talking, I can tell you what the paint's feeling like. And that feels a little bit of pull to it, but not bad at all. And as I say, when you come to these, just knock the edges off so they don't dry too heavy on you. That's not bad, right. Let's bring, bring that mullion rail in. Tips of the bristles laying off again. This top rail, which is actually the kick rail of a door because the door's upside down, just to give a bit of a variation. Get it all on. I've to say, that's not looking bad. Right, we're just coming to the style which this would be the lock rail style of the door because it's where the latch and lock is. You see, I'm just trying to crow's nest it the best I can, trying to get enough paint on so I've got something to work with without putting too much paint on and it runs. Right, let's feather it across, wipe it down and we're going to go in for the layoff now. trying to catch a bit of a creep of a run that might be again user error but do you know what that's not done bad has it can I get you zoomed in one of these cases you've got to just take my word for it on this but not bad at all right let me go and get my brush washed out and we'll drop onto the scuff X. Right, I'm back. That brush washed out all right, no problems there. I'm now going to start on with the Scuff X. And for those that are asking, Scuff X do whites. One's Chantilly Lace and one is, um, I think this is actually super white. Now, the whiter of the two is Chantilly Lace. Um, it's qu quite a nice white, but to be honest, I can't say I've ever really noticed a difference. I could do with getting them by, by um, both by, oh, I can't even say it. I could do with getting them both side by side to see what they're actually like. Right, going in virtually exactly the same. I want to say that I'm pouring the same amount of paint and I tell you what, straight away already, this is a smoother flowing paint. It doesn't feel as sticky, if that makes sense. The Aqua Guard was nice to apply, but it did feel a thicker paint. The viscosity, I'm going to say the viscosity of the paint felt thicker. Now, personal preference is always with paint. 
and I do like this Benjamin Moore. And if anybody's shouting, saying, oh yeah, you're sponsored by Benjamin Moore, I'm far from sponsored by anybody. The only person who needs to be contacting me for sponsorship is Porsche. That's not gonna happen either. Now, I'm applying this and putting enough on the brush so I can get it laid off and spread about. And as I say, personal preference already, this scuff -X feels easier to apply. Now the personal preference on that would be, if you've got a lot of doors to do, you don't want to be fighting with your paint. I'm laying off with the tips of the bristles, just going around the mouldings, neaten those up, and then wipe your brush down Heel of the brush, knock off any fatty edges. Mm. Not bad. Right, let's do again. We're going down that middle rail. The middle mullion. Well, let's call it the mullion. It's not a proper door we're coating up at the moment, is it? Going across the the base of a door which is actually the top because we've rotated around. I have to say I don't feel I'm having to put as much paint on to get this covering and working for me. Tips your bristles, not too much paint on, lay it off. Right, let's go with the this is the hinge side of the door, which is the style, hinge style. If you look in the top corner, there'll be a video there. There'll be a video there to the, the let's call it the atomony, atom, anatomy of a door, the way we paint the door and what we call all the sections of the door. So if I've got it wrong now, if you look at that other video, that is the correct terminology. Right, that's coated up nicely. I think we've got, let's just turn off that ring light and see if, no, I'm not do it justice. Right, let's have a look. Now this door was nibbed down and dusted off before we coated it up. That scuff -X does look a thinner coating of paint, whereas the Aqua Guard does look a bit thicker, a little bit thicker coating. Um, Colour-wise, we're not looking at comparing colours, but that does look a little bit more on the creamy white compared to that super white. I'm not looking at the colours on that. Colours are personal preference for what people want to use, but we want to look at what this opacity coverage is like. And so far in a wet state, they look a much of a muchness. I'm going to come back in a good number of hours, let these dry off and we'll do it again. And let's see what they're like with a second coat. So bear with me. We're here, we're coming back again. Now, I'm going to be honest, I've not been four hours, I've been a bit less than that. Drying, they're both nice and dry. I'm quite happy to coat these back up. Um, hello, can you see me? We've got a bit of sunlight coming in. Um, the BM, Benjamin Moore, Scuff X, that was dry before the Aqua Guard. The Aqua Guard was just hanging a little bit wet into the mouldings of the um, panels, the panning mouldings. But when I've used the Scuff X, I've found within about 20, 25 minutes what had coated up is actually quite dry and like I'm touching it now hard that if you can coat a room up in the morning you go and have your dinner at lunchtime and you'd be fine you will probably set coating in an afternoon that just hangs a little bit wet longer but I'm not saying you can't get two coats on in a day but for the purpose of this I've not been four hours but they are dry and I'm quite happy to now give that second coat because as I've said this is a video let's look in it 
we are looking at the opacity coverage of the paints. Again, working out the tin, got my brush all cleaned out, and we're going in with the aqua guard on the, well, as you're looking at it, right hand side, and we're seeing what this second coat's going to um, cover, stroke what the opacity is going to be like. And it is, this does feel like you are pu putting on a traditional paint, an oil based paint. I do feel I can put a bit more on my brush to brush out and lay off. You know what I said earlier, the Scuff X just feel a lot thinner paint. trying to just lay off gently the corners of the mouldings as not to pull too much paint off because let's just see if we can get this going for two coats put a bit more paint on to brush out get laid off Quite your brush down, tips of your bristles. Not too bad, not too shabby. It does feel it's pulling a little bit. I don't know whether it's the stickiness of the paint or whether I could just do with a little bit longer drying on that first coat. I'm going to actually say it's more, probably more of a case that the paint is a bit thicker and the application feels like it's pulling a bit more. Not that it's pulling on a still a wet surface because it's far from a wet surface. Tips of the bristles laying off. We've got a bristle. Hair today, gone tomorrow. Right. First initial thoughts. Let's angle it in. I've got a nice coat on there, but I'm seeing a little bit of grininess. Were we expecting too much from two coats on that green? Let's go and wash my brush out. I'll be back with the Scuff X. All right, brush is washed out, shook out. So we're exactly the same. We're starting again. Made the brush into the paint. And as I said, I'm working out the tin because I'm only doing a small area. And I'm only doing a small area. I don't want to be wiping paint in and out. Right, see what we go like with this now. Straight off, this feels like you've thinned the paint. It goes on that, that much easier, if I can say easier, than the actual Aqua Guard. That's not to say the Aqua Guard's too thick. I'm trying to put enough paint on like I've done with the Aqua Guard. But with this being thinner paint, I don't want to overload it that we get running. 
But I'm going to say, I'm going to be totally honest, as I'm applying this paint now to this panel, the feel of the paint feels far superior to the Jono's. And I know some people aren't going to like what I'm saying. And also, I don't feel I'm having that I am having to fight to get it covering well. I'm not going to say it's going to cover perfectly, but these initial thoughts of actually applying the paint as I am now, live, and laying it off with the tips, like I've done with the Jonos, knock off the fatty edge of the heel, I would say that panel there has applied a lot easier than the Jonos, and I've not had to work it like I did with the Jonos, Jonos to try and get the coverage. The Jonos are starting to go off already, but even around these mouldings, which it's an ideal environment, uh, environment, it's an ideal surface. We've got flats, we've got rounded curves. We've got a, a convex curve of the moulding. If you don't know what a convex is or a concave, packed to school or everybody's everything's a school day but we've got a rounded molding that i would say is very grinny with brush marks the panel doesn't look too bad go back to the scuff x it doesn't look as grinny let's see what that's like when it's had its time to dry let's just go down these rails i'm just going to call them rails for now Again, I don't feel I'm having to put too much paint on to get the coverage, stroke opacity. You just have to work the paint you don't want any fatty edges, you don't want it curtain running, you don't want it sagging. It's actually very nice to work two paints at the same time. Because where I've done it before, I've done one one day, one another, and it's, you forget, you forget the feel of the paint. And to compare two together, I'm going to say, and I'm going to come back when they dry, I'm going to say that is a lot nicer to apply. And quickly looking, that looks a better opacity coverage. Let's see what it's like when it's fully dry. See you later. Good morning, everybody. I'm back. You've blended out, blended back in, and we're next day. Time-wise, between that top coat going on I'm probably looking at ooh, 18 hours, so it's had proper next day to dry. Now, I did come back and check this within a few hours, and I'll say I'm disappointed. Aquaguard's on this side. That does take a little bit longer to dry off, but that hour to two hours, it's starting to go. This side, the Benjamin Moore, Scuff X, that seems to go within half an hour to an hour. That's touch dry. Now, interestingly, you saw how I applied it. Both had the same sort of technique. The only difference is one paint feels the viscosity of the paint. The, thick, the thickness of the paint of the Jono's Aquaguard is, is, is thicker than the Scuff X. Right, which means somebody's going to shout at me it's harder to work brush work that is a dream to apply that's a little bit more I was, let's say needs a little bit more effort now coming back to it after two to three hours I've got a run there a creep run and if I put my hand over the surface at the top I'll bring the camera in in a minute I have starting to form, I can feel it and I can just see it there. I've got a curtain run. If you don't know what a curtain run is, it's it's like a bit of big wave coming down. It's not like a drip, it's like a 
you know, like, like a wave, like a curtain runner. I'll bring... I'm hoping you can see it just there. Oh, so let's see if I can get the camera in on that. Yeah, I think we can see it. Yeah, we can. I'm going to angle. Can you see there? I'm hoping, come on, focus. I'm hoping you can see that. It starts from about there and it goes all the way up. Now, I could say, was it because it was there on the door before? No, it wasn't, because this has all been previously um, hand sanded down with the cordless sander that we've got. So I've got a curtain run there and if I can bring it up, bring you down. I think we can. Just there, we need to come down a bit more. Just there, we have a proper drip stroke run forming. Now, why is that? Why is that? We've used the same brush. Same brush, it's quite a firm bristled brush. Let's bring it back out. So it's a firm bristled brush. I'd have applied it crow's nest and then laid it off as quick as I possibly could and then tips the bristles, gone with the length, laid it off. Done exactly the same with the scuff X. It's got no runs on that. Nothing. Opacity wise, both are as much of a muchness. I'd actually, I'd have to say, both of them need a, a third coat over that. I've taken the tapes off. <laughs> Over that deep green, deep green, that green colour, both of them would benefit from an extra coat, which is fine. Well, I quite possibly knew that. If we were going over oft white, i.e. previously oil-based paint that's gone creamy coloured, or you've just got lighter off-white colours, I don't see why these wouldn't cover for two coats, which is good. But that dark colour needed a third coat. That's fine, I don't. Finish-wise, they're both not bad. I, I do like the finish of the Scuff X. The Aqua Guard's got a, a very slight increase on sheen level over the Benjamin Moore. But what I'm not getting my head round is these creeps of runs. Now I know why they're forming. It's because the paint viscosity, the paint thickness isn't easy to apply and if you're not brushing it out, if you're not applying it by a crow's nest, if you're not then horizontal or vertical laying it off and then finishing off with the length. So take that panel there, I've crow's nested it, you would then go horizontal to lay it off and then with the tips of your bristles you would finish it off with the length, with the verticals. That's, that's how you do brushwork. Now with water-based paint, you've got to get it on quick. You can't play about with it. Now I'm going to, I'm put, next on the line, I'm going to say this paint needs a bit more playing about with to lay it off, brush it out, lay it off. So you know that you've got the even coverage over that surface, that there's no fear. There might be a little bit of pooling with that paint to create these curtain run there that I've got. And I've got a proper drip run coming there. And it is, it's, it's a proper drip run. I'll bring the camera in in a minute. It's a proper drip run. Whereas the Scuff X, that was easy to apply. You could get it on, lay it off with the tips of the bristles, move on to the next bit. So where am I sitting on the fence with this one? I'm not sitting on the fence. I'm saying, I think there's people that are using these water-based paints that they're struggling, applying it by brush, but getting away with the finish that they get because I'm going to say it, you're using a roller, you're using a mini roller on doors, which is fine, but are you compensating for the lack of skills with the brushwork to get that door? I mean, I can, I've got 33 years, 33 years in the trade. I've been to college, you know, I'll tell you, I've been to college, I've had four years at college along with an apprenticeship. I know brushwork. I know the difference between using oil bases and water-based paints and how the difference is on paint application. And you can't come in, oh, I've, I've done, 
40 years using pure bristles with um, oil-based paints now wants to do water-based and I've still got me pure I, I've I was one of the forerunners for pushing our firm with water-based paints 20, 25 years ago, but they were poor then. Now we've got paints that you, it's like applying an oil-based paint. And if you don't get your brushwork right, you're starting to get your drips and your runs and your curtains forming. Leaving that with you. I'm gonna finish off. I'm just gonna bring the camera in, show you these runs, and I'm gonna say, what do you prefer? Some people are like that, some people are like that, and there is a price difference. So that's me summing up of what these two paints are. If you ask me which would I use more, I would use that. If I'd got that, I could possibly use it, but I know that that would be, and I don't want to say it as easy like taking the easy option out. I would say that is a more forgiving paint plus it's a nice paint so on that note let's zoom in on these and then we'll finish You saw those. And on that note, thanks for listening. Give us some comments, like and subscribe. And again, I'll just mention thanks for all those that are giving me super thanks. Much appreciated. See you on the next one. Please watch the videos that come up at the end.